Hello, and welcome to Casual Shenanigans, episode 21. This is a podcast all about uh, Daisy, Battlefield, Arma, everything PC gaming related. I'm one of your hosts, Germ Gaming. I am joined by my co host, Chris. Hello. And Dave. Hey, folks. I am Dave, the not so evil, evil Viking 13, and I am joined by my coffee. Yes, as always, you're joined <laughs> by your crack juice. Um, mm. Yes. Mm. So uh, tonight we are going to start, as we always do, with the news. And uh, so here's the news. Uh, actually, this is some breaking news. Uh, MSI just released a GeForce GTX 780 Lightning. Um, it lets you overclock it farther. So that's all the news as far as that's concerned. Uh <laughs> And it looks like a usual terrible third-party graphics card. It I just does. hate these third-party designs. Ugh. Well, uh, the reference designs are normally pretty good, but they don't have good cooling. So I am I approve of other of third parties trying to improve on the cards. Um, but yeah, to, to be fair, it's not ugly. It's just that I like that sleek look of the reference cards. Yeah, yeah, they are really sleek. Yours are reference, aren't they? Your, four, uh, your 480s were? Yes, they both are. They're actually, the 480s, besides the, the massive heat pipes, I like that, that like large kind of blued metal style heat sink. It looked pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it, it did look pretty nice. Um, okay, and so was first, definitely needed. <laughs> first bit of news. Uh, NVIDIA has announced a joint partnership with Ubisoft to pretty up watchdogs for the PC. Uh, a recent blog post announcing the partnership didn't go into specifics. It's assumed that the improvements to the PC version of the game would include things like ambient occlusion, high-res art assets, and better anti-aliasing. No word on physics or whether these changes would be unique to NVIDIA graphics cards. Um, you know, there are sometimes changes made to games uh, that are unique, like when uh, on Tomb Raider, if you had an AMD graphics card, Lara's hair flipped around really fancy. And if you had an NVIDIA card, her hair looked like everyone else's video game hair. I don't really know if that's worth owning one card or the other, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Decision maker right there. So, uh, Splinter Cell Blacklist is annoying players by refusing to launch. It is a common occurrence for games to have a few bugs upon release, but you'd think the developer would have noticed if the game wouldn't start before they <laughs> released it. Uh, I'm sure that would have come up at some point during playtesting. Is that uh, something you guys are excited to play? Do you have any interest? Yes. I yeah. have played every single game in the Splinter Cell series, um, starting back to the first one on the GameCube. And I absolutely love the Splinter Cell series. I've liked every single game. And they've actually, they've gotten quite different. What I like about Blacklist is it's taken all the really awesome stealth stuff in Chaos Theory and Pandora tomorrow, and it's added it to the really fast, fluid combat system of Conviction. The only problem with Conviction was that the really only good way to play was to sneak around in the shadows until it was time to pop out and shoot everyone in five seconds. <laughs> and the other games really gave you a lot more options. Um, like you could be totally stealthy. You never had to shoot someone if you didn't want to. Like it was, you were a stealthy guy, and conviction really wasn't built like that at all. So this is kind of a combination of the two, and I am excited to play it when they figure it out. Uh, it's theorized that the problem has something to do with a release date check that went wrong and didn't work. Just another example of DRM making everyone's lives better. Um, the upcoming free-to-play version of Command and Conquer will feature shorter matches than previous games in the series. Matches, instead of being an hour, hour and a half, should be 30 to 45 minutes. It will also feature purchasable starter packs to give players who pay money a distinct advantage over players who don't. Uh. So it's now pay to win, just like most free to play games. Awesome. Thanks, EA. <laughs> In other All news, my hate. <laughs> the Elder Scrolls Online dev team has confirmed that it will cost $15 per month to play on top of having to buy the game as normal. We think it's important to suck as much money as possible out of the diehard Elder Scrolls fans before we almost go bankrupt and then convert to free-to-play. They <laughs> technically didn't say in quite so many words, but they must be thinking that. I think really they, they're charging 60 bucks to get all the Elder Scrolls fans who want you know Skyrim online. And then you charge 15 bucks a month, you figure within two or three months a lot of people will kind of be done with it. Uh, and then in a year from now they can go free-to-play like the Old Republic did. So you get all the people who will give you money, and then you're like, oh, we just aren't making money doing it this way, and then you go free-to-play and still make money. That's my theory. Um, but that, that does kind of suck, because like, I'm not going to try it now. And I was, if it had been a free-to-play game, I definitely would have. I don't know if I'd have spent any money. But, you know, I like the Elder Scrolls, so... Anyway, um, 
Chivalry Medieval Warfare is teaming up with the TV show Deadliest Warrior to release an expansion for the game entitled Chivalry Deadliest Warrior. <laughs> this expansion will let players pick from some of the top warriors of all history and duke it out in the arena mode. The only classes that have been announced so far are Samurai and Spartans. It's assumed that more modern fighting forces won't be included as a Spartan likely wouldn't fare well against like the SAS. <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming it's just going to be the more hacking and slashing, uh, you know, classes. But anyway, that's still pretty cool. Cool news. I still watch that. Not I a bad idea not. for chivalry, actually. Yeah, I mean that's <laughs> chivalry, with a well-known franchise, and they've really been uh, they've really been getting more and more popular ever since the humble bundle that they were in. So, um, kudos to them. So cool to see like a small game like that that just has a kind of niche gameplay style really explode and just be embraced by ridiculous amounts of cheap PC gamers. <laughs> if you uh, if you like cheap PC games and you like medieval type strategy games, the Humble Weekly Sale is Paradox Interactive, and you can get. Let me see. Let me go read it out. Um, I'm so prepared. A lot of games that will keep you busy for a very long time. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, right now, actually, the Humble Bundle is a Humble Comedy Bundle, which is something kind of new and interesting. Um, some good comedians, too, I've heard. Yeah, yeah, they set. are. They are. I'm actually thinking about getting it because I've been wanting to see some of those. But, um, yeah, the Humble Weekly Sale, you get Europa Uni Universalis 3. Now, Europa Universalis 4 just came out. But this is not 4. This is 3. War of the Roses, the Kingmaker version. Um, um, excuse me. Warlock, Master of the Arcane, Leviathan Warships, Dungeon Land, The Showdown Effect, and then Crusader Kings 2 and Magicka. So I bought it really just for Crusader Kings 2, but if you pay $125 or more, you unlock 48 Paradox Interactive <laughs> games. Including all, all of, of their games? Yes. And actually, they make a lot more than I, I knew. Like, they've got a yeah, lot of stuff in here. Yeah, That was quite um, a list. They appear to be a, a definitely mid-tier developer, but a mid-tier developer with a big resume. Um, so yeah, that's that's available if you like stuff like that. And actually, I don't know if this is the proper place to be hurrying myself out here, but um, I have so many stinking game codes to give away because of all these stupid bundles. Um, <laughs> First world problems right there. Oh, darn. I know. No, no, <laughs> let me just read. These are the list of games I haven't given out yet. Tiny and Big and Grandpa's Leftovers. I have no idea what that game is. English a, country wait, is that tune. an actual thing? What, yes. What was that? <laughs> Tiny and Big in Grandpa's Leftovers. That's a game. Okay. <laughs> English Country Tune, Intrusion 2, Serious Sam HD. I have two copies of that. Serious Sam, The Random Encounter, Serious Sam 2, Serious Sam 3, Deluxe. Two copies of Mirror's Edge. Two copies of Dead Space. Two copies of Crisis 2, Max Edition. Um, Command and Conquer, Red Alert, Up, Uprising, Red Alert 3, Uprising, Warlock, Dungeon Land, Leviathan, Warships, The Showdown Effect, Europa Universalis 3, and then on Origin, I have Battlefield 3, Mirror's Edge, and Populous. Nice. So, people who are listening, if you want one of those games, I don't know, tweet at me or something, I need to start giving them away because they're piling up pretty quickly. <laughs> and I just, I, I got them in bundles where I was like, hey, for $2, you know, I could get this game or nothing, and anyway... On the note of giveaways, I have a minor confession. <laughs> oh, do you? I've been holding on to a, a like a five dollar copy of the newest Stalker, Call of Pripyat, on my my Steam account for like a year now. I think it was from the summer sale two thousand twelve. I've been planning on doing a Stalker video for a while just to give away the code. And recently, I went to try that new uh, Misery mod for Stalker. Uh huh. And I realized that my my copy of Call of Pripyat was like the disc collector's bundle from Target. And I couldn't find my disc on my shelf, so. <laughs> I looked around and then lazily added my gift code to my own account <laughs> so I could install it on Steam. I That's, felt a little bad, but boy, was it convenient. It's the right type of lazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. Which, by the way, the mod is amazing. I died three times within two minutes of spawning into the game for the first time. So what does it the really, mystery mod do? It makes the already super hardcore Stalker series even more hardcore. In what way? That game was really hard. Um, as I said, <laughs> I spawned in a fog bank at the edge of the map, and basically, because of the A-Life system, where the, the mutants and animals actually are, like, dynamically spawned and move around the map, and, like, the factions dynamically spawn and move around the map, 
I basically got three really bad spawns where I would end up in the middle of like a pack of mutants, just bad luck, and that's just, you died. That's just how it is. Life in the zone sucks. <laughs> and it also adds, I think, a ridiculous amount of things to the loot tables, as in like six different ty- kinds of like cigarettes in the trash loot, <laughs> just because. Just, okay. <laughs> that seems like a weird thing to have a lot of different variants of, but... Hey, if you want if you want some serious loot, Stalker Mystery Mod is where it's at. <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, I think in my Steam inventory, I've got um, Oregon Trail, uh, Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition, and Arma 2 Operation Arrowhead. Ooh. All stuff I picked up in sales I need nice. to give out to somebody. Anyway, um, the meandering has definitely reached a zenith here. Uh, <laughs> Going back briefly to uh, The Elder Scrolls Online... I, Joel's not here, so I can't rub it like right in his face. But I've been seeing ever since they announced it that it's going to be a, a like monthly subscription. And he's been his. How do I, I, I know exactly it? Like, why they're doing it for the same reason Star Wars did. You grab everybody yeah, yeah. first, and then I mean, you you know, you make a thirty million dollars <laughs> out of the gate, and then when you go bankrupt, you just get the money trickling in for the next thirty years. The level of optimism that I have for Daisy standalone is what Joel had for the lack of monthly payments for Elder Scrolls Online. Well, so for, silly. for once, I'm right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm pretty sad to see it, though. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. I'm, do you ever like see tabs open in your browser and you're like, when on earth did I have that open? Yeah, I, on average, I have three browsers going across two screens with tabs in each window. Same here. I've got my because I, you know, I have different Google accounts. I have to keep signed in on different browsers. You know, exactly. It's, it's important. Exactly. Jeremiah, you get me. I do. <laughs> I do get you. Joel just mocks my tab obsession. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, so, so does Chris apparently. <laughs> oh look, there go all the viewers. Um, so. Uh, let's talk about Daisy briefly, um, and actually, Dave, I'm going to let you lead this because we didn't have any Daisy news planned. But then you came across a very interesting article. Yeah, before Daisy, I just saw that um, EA just confirmed, like on Twitter, two minutes ago, that Battlefield 4 is going to be at PAX, which is like awesome. So hopefully, Dasgro and Mantis will have some good stuff for us. Actually, I think um, I think Mantis said, tweeted something just a couple hours ago that he. Uh, he like was rendering out a no. He was rendering out a bunch of Gamescom. Someone was rendering. Oh, nice. Someone no, no not Mantis. That was Jack Frags. That was Jack Frags. Never mind. Which I want to see that too because his footage was great. It's nice to see a player that can actually get kills like on the floor of a trade show. Congratulations. I mean, I wouldn't. I'd be just going like this mouse is wrong. I don't like this keyboard. Oh, oh yeah, Everyone's definitely. I'm sure. Me. Like, I'm sure I'd, I'd do the, the same thing. Shooting the wall, going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually not sure how Jack Frags pulled it off, but his footage was great. It was yeah, the best I, out of the Yeah, I remember the, watching that. Group. That was that was good. So, Daisy, back to Daisy. Um, yes. Wired actually released an article. I believe it was Wednesday. With you a guys, very soulful picture of Dean. <laughs> a very emotional, soulful picture. Uh, just you guys in this Google... abandoned house, guys. <laughs> just standing in this abandoned house by the window with all my feelings. <laughs> Daisy gives me so many feels, guys. So many well, feels. I want to know is why aren't you developing Daisy, Dean? You got time to pose in a house. <laughs> uh, don't give people sorry. ideas. I'm sorry. That, sorry. That, that's the next tweet coming his way right now. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you pose for a picture? Anyway, if you guys Google um, Dean Hall Wired article, it is a really great re- uh, read. It actually details his military experience and how... Uh, a 20 day wilderness survival experience actually directly inspired his idea for Day Z and how he lost 44 pounds over 20 days while surviving with other members of his, of his military group just out in the wilderness trying to get food and water. And hey, it sounds an awful lot like Day Z. Uh, there's a great point in the story where he was low on food. I think it was about halfway into the 20 days and wasn't able to, to keep preparing his own food and finding his own food, he got so hungry, he actually had the idea to basically turn bandit. And he started stalking one of the other military guys out there in in the hopes of stealing some of his prepared food off of him. The guy actually caught Dean, like, sneaking up on him, and in, I guess, just pity, gave him some ramen noodles or something. 
um, those kind of experiences directly inspired at least a, a base version of Daisy. His original concept actually had no zombies at all. And right now, where you have so many people complaining about the the kill on sight mentality in Daisy, and how like why can't we all just like fight zombies together and just hold hands? Like it's really neat to see that the original idea was actually just player versus player. It's pretty neat to see. Um, and even despite losing, or besides losing the 44 pounds, he had to have emergency surgery after that experience because of intestinal problems from all the weird stuff he had to eat over the 20 days. You guys hadn't actually read this article yet, had you? Uh, I, I just read it now. <laughs> Were you just reading it, like, right this second? Yeah, I, I just finished reading it. Um, it's it's very interesting. Now, so the main one of the main points of the article is he originally designed the game it sounds like to be a game where players are pitted against each other and the zombies were kind of added just to add like an extra level of something to the world which is interesting because the way people play daisy really is player versus player most of the time Mm -hmm. it's not player versus zombies but i think why daisy fails at being player versus player is that there is no downside to just shooting everybody like you don't need anyone to you don't need to cooperate to survive. You're actually far better off most of the time. Like if you have one partner, that's pretty good, just someone to like patch you up if you break your legs or whatever. <laughs> but other than that, like what's the advantage of playing with other people? I mean there there isn't really if you're a lone wolf type, like you don't need other people to live through a town or to get supplies or something. You get all the best loot yourself if you just shoot everybody as soon as you see them. So in that sense, I would say Daisy was not successful um, as far as his mm-hmm. original vision, but as a zombie survival simulator, it obviously was very engaging. I mean, we've put enough time into it. Um, but I would actually like to see him get more, and we've said this a million times before, but I'd like to see him get more back to that on the Daisy standalone, figuring out ways to make it good for people to work together. Because if it was actually designed so that people, like there was real incentives for people working together instead of just murdering each other, the game would be fascinating. Um, and as of right now, it, it really is just a death match. I mean, we were playing Overwatch the other day. I was in Electro. I just spawned. I'd gotten hit <laughs> by a zombie. I was bleeding. Like, I, I had nothing. And I went into the hospital to grab some blood. And this guy in full Special Forces outfit, like he had the Special Forces helmet and the full camo and everything, and a carbine just wanders around the wall and just stares at me. And I was like, hi, sorry, I'm friendly. I just spawned. I've got nothing. And he just stared at me for a second and then shot me in the head and left. <laughs> like he didn't need anything off my body. Like he just shot me. Like that was it. Just, oh, well, I see you. You can't even call that like the thrill of the hunt either because you were just totally defenseless. Yeah, so I was the defenseless. Of presented, well, you still presented a risk usually. I guess, but not much. <laughs> and, and that's, I, mean, I mean, that's why I shoot people is because they present a risk to me. And, you know, you really can't do much about that just because you can't trust them. So it's avoidance yeah. or engagement. Well, yeah. How about this one? When Joel and I were playing a few days ago, Joel was on the coast at Komarovo and he got attacked by a new spawn with a 1911 who broke his legs. And then while Joel was trying to crawl back to like a spawn area to look for morphine, a sniper up on a mountain started trying to snipe him as he crawled towards morphine. <laughs> and I actually rescued Joel with a bike. And I don't want to spoil the upcoming video, but basically that sniper ended up chasing us for like a half an hour trying to finish Joel off just because. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that's... Like, there yeah. needs to be something built into the game where, like, if you want to engage people, you can. If you want to steal people's food, you can. But there's a disadvantage. Like, there needs to be – there's, like, well, no repercussions. Well, do I have some good news for you. All right. <laughs> so the original concept, like we, like we already mentioned right here, was just, just the player versus player. And kind of like player versus environment. You fight the hunger, the sickness, and kind of like yourself. And we're going to see more of that in the standalone where uh, the looting, the starvation, the sickness, the medication – that's going to be purifying your water. All that stuff's going to be more important. And there's going to be more incentive to work together because D wants to make it so that some of the stuff that you need, because of the amount of diseases and the amount of things you need for crafting and all, you won't be able to loot it all yourself. You will need to trade. And in addition, if you do banditry where you just shoot on site, items are now going to be damaged with localized damage on the person's body. So if you see that player off of the distance and you're like, I need some, some I don't know, um, some med kits with some blood bags in them, 
and you gun him down, well, you just filled his, his backpack full of holes, that med pack is now like 75% damaged, and most of those blood bags are useless. Mm-hmm. So you have incentive to actually encounter the player, maybe hold him at gunpoint, maybe like handcuff him or zip tie him, steal stuff out of his backpack, and then probably kill him, I guess. <laughs> but at least there's an incentive to, to have more interaction versus just instantly killing uh, with you know rapid hit rapid hit fire and just taking people out. Yeah, but still, like it doesn't that doesn't solve the problem of like the guy who saw me in the hospital and just killed me out of boredom or just because he liked shooting people. Right. Like right. there's no like what if and you know we've talked about the zombie AI. I feel like we're retreading probably retreading ground we've talked about too many times before, but. Like, what if you shot your gun and every single zombie in the town comes running for you? Like, if you shoot a gun, it's a big stinking deal. Yeah. That would mean, that would at least mean in towns, people wouldn't have an incentive to kill you. People would have an incentive to hide and only engage if you're convinced that you have the enough power to fight through it. And that would mean people who are looting stuff, like, if you open fire, you're doing it because you feel like it's your last shot to get out of town. Um, Because, I mean, right... The game makes psychopaths out of normal, well-adjusted people. I mean, would would you agree? It makes Joel even worse. <laughs> I yeah, mean, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, look at our Breaking Bad series where, with just the intentions of being bad, we just had way too much fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now, that was to qualify it, because it might sound like I'm complaining a lot when we go around and killing people all the time. That was a server that would like had vehicles and guns laying absolutely everywhere. That was pretty much a deathmatch server that we were on. Um, we we don't play like that in normal Daisy because there's too much risk. Like if you die, it's a big deal mm-hmm. because well, it's a lot of frustration. Um, but yeah, in the Breaking Bad series, we were just pretty much were psychopaths, and it was fun. And that's I guess the problem is if people feel like there's no repercussions, then sure, why not kill people? What's the big deal? But, I think the key is going to be to just provide more incentive to work together. Maybe have goals like adding a, a generator to a town where you can bring the lights back on, but you have to do that's it That's way together. too complicated of a goal. It needs to be like a, this is a goal we're doing like right now to live. <laughs> like, you know, one button yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the original Daisy, when things were more rare and when things were harsher and when people hadn't figured everything out was that way. The goal was get a tent, establish a base, get it hidden, get a vehicle. But as that became more prevalent and people became more well-adjusted to that, you know, the only things beyond that are, you know, all right, let's get in, have fun, screw around, and go attack the Northwest Airfield and get everybody killed. You know, that's a good point, Chris. I I think a big part of it was everyone learned how to game the game. Once you figured out the system, you had a methodology to follow, and you didn't need anyone else's help. And, that's true. That's that we do that, and other people were just a means to an end. Like, oh, I can use this person to like jumpstart my progress down this this invisible tech tree. And yeah, I, and it went from the game being surviving from the elements and from the environment to you know surviving off of the other people. Yeah, at the expense of the other players, like right. to to make it easier. And I think in standalone. A lot of people are worried about the complications, all this new stuff that's being added with all the diseases. But I think anything that kind of obscures an easy path to advance in the game is a good thing. Anything that makes it harder and to make you think twice about just taking risks is definitely a good thing. Yeah, better zombies will do that. I think trading will throw an interesting dynamic where, you know, there are more than A or B, you know, flee your fight. It's, Mm -hmm, you know... I mean, it may not be game changing, but it's at least pause to say, "Hey, you got any? You know, I'm looking for. I, I really need a bandage. You know, even if it's a, a even if it's a full health player, and he's got all kinds of gear. If he sees somebody like you in the hospital, he'd like, "Hey, did you find any bandages? Like, I'll, I'll help. You know, I'll give you morphine if you got a bandage." Like that just adds yeah. one more possible scenario to yeah. the situation. A, a real trading system could potentially work. You know, I, I'm guessing it's going to be where both parties have to like accept the proposed trade. Is that what they've talked about? I haven't heard about an actual yeah. like but, trading. Oh, there there isn't an actual trading system. Not, not that I've heard. Now, oh, okay, that would I be nice. There was. I thought I'd heard something about it. I could be wrong. Did I miss Daisy News? I'm, what? I'm pretty sure there is. <laughs> Google. Anyway. Yeah, that's kind of some of the inspiration of Daisy, 
and its initial it's really good ideas. Yeah, you guys need to just Google Dean Hall uh, Daisy Wired article. It's it makes excellent. the uh, New Zealand Army sound cool. You can just he requested a discharge from the military, and they were like, "Cool, yeah, you want to go make video games? That sounds fine. <laughs> go ahead, move to the Czech Republic, make video games." I don't know. It sounds pretty brutal to me. Like that was oh, some no, serious hardcore, <laughs> but I'm saying survival like, stuff. But it's but it's an army that you can apparently request. Like, hey guys, the army was cool. You mind if I just bounce? And then yeah, like, it's like, no, I, I know good. you trained me for three years, but <laughs> oh, let's be honest. What conflicts is New Zealand involved in? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, yeah, we're not we're not gonna need you. Uh, <laughs> Fighting off all the Lord of the Rings fans. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, so, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Nice. Cool. More coffee. Yeah. All right. Uh, Arma 3. So if you're on the dev branch of Arma 3, uh, then you're very used to everything breaking and crashing and not working all of the time. Um, An extra amount. Yes, but also, uh, then you are probably playing Altus. Altus is the giant, giant island. The main island for Arma 3. I guess it's the Shinaris to Arma 2's Utes. I don't know if... Like, Arma 2 had Utes and then Shinaris, and this is, Altus exactly. is like Shinaris, and Stratus was like Utes, but whatever. bigger and prettier. <laughs> well, so that's what I want to talk about. So we went for a tour of Altus, and it's big. Like, I can't stress how big this thing is. Um, there's a map going around online comparing the size of it to, like, the Skyrim maps and Battlefield maps. The only game map that we know of that's bigger, a non-loading screen game map. Like, I'm sure uh, World of Warcraft's map is bigger. But um, yeah, the only map that's bigger is Just Cause 2, and it's got a lot of water. It has a yeah. lot more water. Um, so this is probably the most landmass of any one game instance, I think. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely massive, and it actually runs decently well. Like, the frame rate drops. <laughs> well, <when you> t- <laughs> depends. I we, found we, out that the time of day that we did our mission uh, kind of had the view distance naturally limited by a little fog and environmental elements. Oh, really? Strip okay. that away and go out for a cruise at 12 o'clock. Um, yeah. I was oh, no. getting like 12 in a chopper, 12 frames per second. Oh, no. And that's, that's when the night before I was running at about 60 and the view distance was still high. So I, wonder, I dropped it down. I'm managing about 40 now. That could be a dev branch thing too. The dev branch Possibly. has been all over the place with performance, so I wouldn't yeah. worry yet. But I find it interesting that your frame rate plummets when you get into a town, but there's no people in there. Like, it's just the number of objects, I guess. I think uh, so. Yeah. Actually, that's that's. So all right, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the map is, I would say, it's mostly like gently rolling farmland and countryside. Would you guys agree? No. No. <laughs> all right. I mean. Yes. <laughs> I, I wouldn't say mostly. Maybe half is farmland. Okay. It's a lot of mountains and coastal areas. Well, but the mountains and coastal areas, they're similar type things. Like, it's, it's, there's no massive mountains. There's no desert. There's a salt flat, which is really depressing. There's some pretty massive mountains. <laughs> eh. I mean, some, some really good they're sized not ones. mountains if we're talking like Rockies or Appalachians. True. They that's were, true. I guess I don't, I don't know what Greece mountains, mount, Greek Greece, mountains look like. But yeah, they're yeah not, that's true. Uh, I, I don't know what the area is supposed to look like. They're Compared hills. To previous the maximum games, elevation is about yeah, 350 it's, meters. It doesn't feel like some of the mountains in, uh, in Shinaris as far as uh, like steepness and stuff, and maybe I just haven't seen the right ones. I've seen very little of the map up close. Like We did a big flying tour of, of most of it, but that doesn't... That doesn't show you, you know, all of the nuance and stuff. And, I mean, one of the cities, Kavala, you know, we flew over it, but then we did a mission in it the other night, and, like, there's so much going on in Kavala, or so many different things in Kavala that you never notice from the air. So I'm sure we're going to be discovering cool little areas and things for years <laughs> if we're still <laughs> yeah. playing. Um, but, so, my thing that I wasn't all sure about... Um, What's this thing you just dropped in chat, Dave? I, I didn't want to distract us yet. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. We'll get to it. <laughs> um, so my thing about the map is to me, it kind of feels like they had a map that was like smaller than that. They're like, no, but the island's actually this big. We need to stretch it out. And then they just added like a lot of filler space. And the, I think the, you're actually off base on that one because I know you guys, you guys disagree. <laughs> Tell me why I'm wrong. I, I, I want to hear your opinions. The the way that they create maps in the Arma series is they start with source satellite photography 
and create basically a one-to-one ratio replication of the area. So what you're seeing, right. there's actually there's some photos, and let me see if I can find some of them of of comparisons of different areas and. It's really eerie with the the lighting in Armor Three. Some of these areas, like you go up on the mountain, look down, and compare it to the photo, and they nailed it. It's like just like real life. Yeah, not only that, but like if you if you've flown around in a small plane in real life, everything flattens out and looks real boring real quick. But I I mean I did a mission the other day where I was just it was a chopper mission still, but I would get out at various points, landed at different airfields, and attacked a convoy, and it is just so beautiful. And I was amazed actually at the at the difference in terrain between one side of the island and the yeah. other. So you yeah. think for I'm, I'm just I'm judging place, it too quickly because I'm I think seeing so. it from the air? And for, and for a physical place that's really a representation, not of like Skyrim, which is, you know, extremes for the sake of pretty, you know? Yeah, right. yeah, Th- this right. is pretty in its own way because it, it's, it has a realistic feel that you don't get anywhere else. Here we go. I got a link for you guys right here. This is an entire gallery of comparison images. Just Just click through some of these, Jeremiah. It's pretty stunning. Are we going to have I, a link for this for our viewers? Uh, I'll post it in the comment on the video. Yeah, right uh, now. I'll I'll post it in the description too for the final render. Comments but, uh, can't contain links. I will not post it as a comment in the video. I should have known <laughs> that. Yeah, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, I, I saw. I did see these earlier, and um, yeah. So what I will say positive about this is, like, you know, I, I was criticizing it for being maybe a little boring. It. It, it does have a good aspect of boring to it. Like, it just feels normal. You know, where Skyrim, you definitely can tell everything is supposed to be this fantastical land and everything. I think and, your complaint might actually just be that this area of Greece is just not that exciting of a terrain. Possibly. But <laughs> now, actually, here's one of my big... Here's Here's my main complaint that I hadn't gotten around to yet. The world... It feels empty because there's nobody in it. Mm. You fly over these giant towns that are abandoned. <laughs> like, what What if, I mean, and I'm just thinking with the AI that Bohemia uses, this would murder your frame rates. <laughs> but what if there was like some <clears throat> civilian population thing you could add to a town where it just populates the town with NPCs, stupid NPCs, that like, that don't do a whole lot. But just so like you're doing they this get in your way. <laughs> well, yeah, like, yeah, it would just feel so much better if like you're going to assault a town and there are people there in cars and like it looks like something's going on like you Grand know, Theft Auto. That's a great point because that mission we tried in Armor 2 um, on I totally forgot the name of the, the desert map where the mission Zargabad. maker actually yeah. Zargabad. Well, that was the town. Oh, oh, you're asking for the name of the mission. Uh, the Sharp Edge, the one that where we killed like 120 people. No, the Arrowhead map. I totally forgot the name of it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, that was... The desert map. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was Zargabad, the sharp the sharp edge. That was the one where you killed everybody in Zargabad. Right, but like like Trinaris was in Arma 2, I can't remember the name of the map in Takistan. Takistan. there we okay. go. That took way too long to work through. <laughs> Sorry, you want the name of the whole... Okay, I was thinking the name yeah, of the yeah. town, wasn't I? Um, but the mission creator had gone in and added tons of civilians, and that really changed the feel of the mission. Like you're you're fighting through the city, and you see somebody like run by in your peripheral vision. You aim down sights real quick, and oh crap, it's a civilian! Like don't shoot, or in yeah. Joel's case, well, fire think, away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a really good point, Jeremiah, and I completely agree with you. It, it does feel like an empty world, but that comes down to you know the mission creation. In in even the Arma Two missions, you know there was frequently not in all the big towns. Um, but in some of the missions where it opens up more, they do have civilian populations, and and you know that's in the 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 campaign. It'll be interesting to see as Arma as uh, Bohemia rolls out the campaign how much they bring the world to life. I think yeah. that will you know really mm. transform it. And, and like I'm, to your point exactly, you know, the other night um, when I created that helicopter mission for myself, um, I actually did like spend an extra 20 minutes populating airfields and like some other random stuff going on just because i wanted to be flying over and like seeing other stuff so like i put cars in the airport parking lot and (laughs) (laughs) random stuff like that just to to build out the world a little but yeah i think uh, yeah i think that would make like if you know the rolling farmland if you're rolling past a farm and like people are working there and stuff like that would make it feel more like it's not just this giant empty zone because right now it just feels like a, a big empty sandbox and whereas it like, is <laughs> it is but 
using like Grand Theft Auto, to many people, the hallmark or like the gold standard of sandbox gaming, um, there's just stuff going on everywhere, like all the time. There's always something going on. Um, and that just, I mean, they're not Grand Theft Auto and Arma 3 are totally different types of games, but, <laughs> uh, but it is a cool, it's a cool thing. Like to just, you're in a bustling, busy world. You've got your own stuff going on. Um, I don't know. You know, it would almost be really neat if some, some mission makers would create some, uh, some scripts that you could copy and paste where they create like a module of civilian stuff in a town where if you're doing a mission for that town, just go ahead and copy and paste like a whole civilian set before you yeah. started working on your mission just for that town area. That might be kind of cool. Yeah, I think yeah, that, would, that would solve the problem so well. I mean, it would save time and yeah. on the mission, hear that, creator mission creators. Part. Hear that? <laughs> make us make a model. You have your orders. Go for it. Smart forth. scripters. Yeah. Yeah, well, you could. People and who actually just, know what they're doing. And they didn't. They wouldn't have to do a lot. Just people who like some of them are at home. Some of them are walking around the streets. Like it doesn't have to be a ton, but just a couple cars driving around. I mean, that goes a yeah. long way because we were in that giant town and nothing was going on. Which is it was kind of eerie because the um the town itself felt so real. All those small alleyways, yeah, all the, the integral buildings. Great. Oh, it felt like an actual place, just where everyone had run away at the sound of gunfire. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, everyone had left the town immediately, which is <laughs> yeah. kind of eh. I mean, the last also, bus pulled out right before we got there. <laughs> and this is probably a little too much complaining. I don't think video games are here yet, but the buildings also don't really have like anything in them. I think we just lost Dave from the call. <laughs> I'll see if he rejoins us. And he's back. Hey, you're back. <laughs> My tab closed. Wrong oh. button. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, all I was saying was I think it would be cool if the buildings had more stuff in them too. Like you kick open the door to some big office building. It's not just like an empty floor. I mean, the thing yeah. you have to remember, I'll just put this out there one more time, is that what what they've given us to play around with so far is the editor. Right. So it's all on us to add that stuff. And they give us all those tools. It's kind of a blank slate to say, hey, here, go play around. And there are, uh, like, we've been playing some really awesome Arma 2 missions that people put a lot of work yeah, into. Yeah, right, yeah. And I'm sure that people are going to do awesome stuff with this. I'm just kind of voicing, like, as the game's releasing now, it feels like, yeah, really what we're getting is the editor and the potential for the community to make good stuff out of it. Um, and it doesn't... Bohemia. And I'm really excited about that. <laughs> I am, I am. I, I'm excited for when, when people, like, when the game releases, I'm going to give it, like, a week or two, and then I'm going to go download the highest-rated weapons packs to add, like, 30 more weapons in. Nice. And more character skins and stuff, and I'll have to let you guys know the weapon packs. You guys can add them in, too, so we all have the same stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm planning on doing all that. Like, I'm really looking forward to the game coming out, um, so I don't want to sound like I'm not. It's just, you know... it. it it's not blowing me away. I'm really excited, but it doesn't feel like the next generation of simulation or anything. I've actually got a separate bone to pick, I think. I think, for me, the map is mind-blowing for me. Like it, Maybe it's just because I'm an environment artist by trade. Like I, I'm just amazed by it. It's incredible, and I can't imagine the amount of work that went into it. I'm actually a bit saddened by the lack of content as far as like weapons and vehicles go. Just, I am too. Just in comparison to Arma 2. Now... Don't get me wrong, the quality of it compared to Arma 2 is a whole different level. Like, all these guns and vehicles finally look consistent and, and very, very nice and, and current gen, maybe even next gen, I'd say. It's just that there are less of them, and I get why that happened, but it's still kind of sad to see. Yeah, and, you know, we're, we're kind of artificially remembering more numbers. Because um, we're after and- all the Arma 2 expansions right now. Well, we have all the Arma 2 expansions, and in Arma 2, if you had a different scope, that was an entirely different gun. Yep. And in Arma 3, there's a bunch of different scopes and like attachments and stuff. You can, Well, not a bunch of different ones, but there's a couple different attachments and things you can add to each gun, which effectively extends the amount of guns. Like There probably is about the same number of guns as was in the Arma 2 base game, um, but eh, it's still... You know, why aren't there, like, they... more vehicles? Like, there, there yeah. definitely aren't as many vehicles as there were. There's, like, a pickup truck. You know what it is for me? Not so much, like, the military weapons that are missing. I think, for me, it's the, the old tech stuff that's missing, like the Lee Enfields and the, the technicals with the 50 cals in the back, like that low-tech stuff. Mm-hmm. I, that's some of my favorite, like, missions to do is when you're fighting, like, a low-tech faction in Arma 2. Because that's what a lot of modern military conflicts are like. Your favorite thing to do is to fight the poor people. <laughs> <laughs> Makes me feel like a man. 
it's so nice when you're just shooting the pores and all they have is a spoon and an axe to attack you with and you're like <laughs> and you mow them down as you invade their homeland <laughs> those, def- those are th- the best missions you're right there was a wide variety <laughs> of stuff like that in, in armor 2 um so maybe their first weapons pack that we'll see will be like a, a cool older weapon stuff because armor 3 is set in the future but right now it's all futuristic stuff right yep well, it's, that's interesting, too. I mean, the, the point that you bring that up, in a lot of the military shooters we're used to, we're used to being the faction with the edge in technology. But Op 4 in, in Arma 3 is as, techno- as technologically advanced as Blue 4, which is kind of weird. Um, you know, I, I was looking at the player models the other day, and, like, the Op 4 uniforms and vehicles look even way more futuristic than Blue 4, <laughs> um, which is just different um i mean would you guys agree like it is it is different um yeah like the ifrit and stuff the ifrit looks way more advanced than the hunter Um, even just their uniforms like it's you know yeah it's it's a change it's a big change um yeah yeah we'll see i'm imagining that not just with all in arma but someone's just gonna do a straight port of most of the arma 2 content into arma 3 i wonder if that's something like the developers are working on like a couple of them are like, oh man, we need to get some of these great legacy guns in, and like yeah. the guys like, eh, not priority now. The community will do it. <laughs> that was the cool part about uh, the the Daisy mod for Armor Three was that the modders have the ability to do uh, CD key checks, and basically it checks to make sure you actually you know own a copy of Armor Two, and then it's like, okay, here here's all your Armor Two content in Armor Three, bam. And so Bohemia can actually give that a thumbs up because it's it's you know secure, it's protecting their their rights, but we still have all this this awesome stuff from the old game. Like that's that's pretty awesome. Right, and yeah, the Arma Three DayZ mod is uh, decent. You know, it's got plenty of problems um, because the, all the content isn't working right, and Arma Three isn't even released yet. But uh, <laughs> but it's a cool that's idea. A good, that's a good point. Like I can't believe it's functional at all. Like an unfinished yeah, mod for an beta, unfinished game. <laughs> the beta is decently stable. Most of the stuff that breaks in the beta is when they release a patch. A lot of the custom missions stop working. Yeah. Um, yes, just they go through and rename all the stuff again. <laughs> yes. Yes. But uh, you think they would install? Well, it's probably a lot of work. Make like a converter to convert. You know, to up convert your missions, but that's probably too much work. Yeah, they can probably just say, "Hey, look, we haven't even released the game yet. What, like, stop, guys, just chill." <laughs> Good things are coming either way. Good things are yeah. definitely coming, and I'm glad that we went back and started playing some Arma Two custom missions because that really made me excited. Because, you know, Arma Three custom missions we were getting kind of old because they was on one tiny little map and they A were a lot more old. very similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but. Arma 2, we've played some really awesome stuff in Arma 2 so far. Most of it in Takistan, interestingly. But, That's a good point, yeah. Um, I, I've got Shinaris others. is my just, favorite map, but... We just need to branch right. out. Um, I mean, I've got Shinaris ones to play, but uh, anyway. Um, we can play one tonight if you want to. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's... Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see when people really get their hands on it. I'm excited to see what the next expansion is going to be. It's probably going to be, what, two years before we see that, though? Um, I mean, unless they do a bunch of smaller expansions and a big one. They have confirmed content packs coming for free. Uh, for weapons free. packs, mission packs, that kind of nice. thing. So that's exciting. Well, a free weapons pack, I'm betting, is going to be all of the Arma 2 weapons. <laughs> <laughs> I am more than okay with that. Because honestly, yeah. the models are still really good. I mean, if they just... They could probably open up their original art files and then just, like, save less compressed versions of the textures and then... Except for the 1911, throw that thing out. <laughs> oh, now, all right, 3D artists, you both of you, correct me if I'm wrong. Would they have like a high poly master version of the guns and then a low poly version to stick in the game, or do you make only the low poly and keep that? You like, make both. You yeah. make so they they probably have high poly masters. They could go back and just yes. like re I, re-export isn't the right word, but Hundreds you know what I mean. Of guns, small staff, retexturing everything. Yeah overnight no 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 <laughs> keep the textures and everything i'm saying just like if they have the original uncompressed art files just yeah, say you still gotta go through the versions. whole process again though i mean you do but it's something like could one guy do one gun a day maybe if he yeah, was very does. very familiar with them yeah yeah it's possible. I mean, if you were the guy working on the armor two guns could you do an armor three you know part one to armor three each day if you had all the high-res stuff to work from i'm yeah. just saying it's not necessarily that hard to do 
if you could pull the original artist, that would be even faster. Where yeah. he's like familiar with his own work and his his you know workflow and all. But like, I just, there's I probably just only that. like one or two guys there that you know are the guys that do the weapons. That's true. I don't know yeah. how big their staff is, but I know it's not large. It's not you know yeah, battlefield. Yeah, they they have accomplished a ton for so much such a small staff. As far as textures go, usually you create your textures at like two or four times the resolution you want for the for the final game. So that's just a matter of going back to your source files and re-exporting. That's pretty that, easy. That's what I thought. I mean, that's what I do with all my big design stuff, even if I'm only going to mm-hmm. be using it. Yeah. Like, say I'm only going to be using it at web resolution. I know a year from now, someone's going to come back and be like, hey, we'd like to print a poster out of this. Can I just take that slide you sent me and <laughs> blow it up to four feet wide? I'm like, no! Can I get this slide on, on, like, a, on like a billboard size? You know, <laughs> or maybe a bus, actually? <laughs> um. So yeah, so I always save stuff at like 8K resolution if I have the high enough res art assets to start with. And I'm like, one day, one day they'll need it. They'll thank me. And this Most hard drive it's... cries. <laughs> no, no, no. I've got, I've, got, I've got four two terabyte drives in my work computer. The power. Nice. And I actually just now I have, a, I have a 240 gig or 256 gig, whatever size it is. Like 256 gig Samsung SSD on the way. I'm excited about my... Nice. OCZ Agility 3 is going to get retired to either a recording drive or a storing my um, bridge cache on it or something. I don't know. I'm going to use it for something. Speaking of high-res textures, I recently started playing Dishonored for the first time on PC. Oh, what do you think about that? I love the style, but man, the textures are from 2004. The I was textures, so disappointed. The textures are pretty bad. Yeah. You go into the graphics settings and your options are anti okay or slightly better you have an option for field of view and that is it (laughs) it's it's a complete console port the art style is beautiful but the textures really do feel several generations old you can tell they're shooting for 720 (laughs) well honestly it's i mean it's not any worse than borderlands Borderlands, well, no, Borderlands it's, style it's, helps. Yeah, Borderlands doesn't matter. Dishonored Borderlands is, some, is about dancing Dishonored's with guns. style is kind of close to that, though. I mean, it's but but Dishonored's textures are definitely lower res than Borderlands Two, De- like noticeably lower res. Uh, but yeah, the game itself is is actually a lot of fun. I might actually crank the difficulty up because I just finished playing Last of Us on the PlayStation, um, which was a lot of fun. Oh, but yeah, what did you think about that? I, I loved it, um, minus a glitch where somehow I managed to break a PlayStation game, and I, I turned the corner in one of the sewer levels, and in a doorway that was supposed to load the next part of the level, it was just the skybox, like blank infinity, and I replayed that section three times on two different saves, and was able to replicate the same bug every time, and finally had to load one of Joel's saves like from the next level to keep going, but um, I did it. overall the game was great, yeah. Yeah, I can't talk about too many... Um... Yeah, you can't talk about too much from it. Yeah, but, yeah, awesome game. I, I was just going to say that as far as difficulty goes, like, I'm not great with the controller. I got better as I played, but the combat was pretty intense. And then I moved to Dishonored on PC, where I'm, like, right there with my mouse and keyboard right up next to the screen. And I'm playing on normal, and I was just massacring everybody, like, so <laughs> easily, just having more control and, and more experience with it. So I might crank it up. Hey, Joel's in the comments. <laughs> He's in the comments. Yeah, of the video. <laughs> Hide your kids. Hide your wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he says man. he's coming. I did send him an invite. Well, if he's coming, it's just in time to do his 90 seconds while we wrap down. While we're waiting for Joel to maybe hop in, um, something that we were just talking about before the podcast is we're, we've been playing a lot more Arma. Um, but something we have not been doing is playing Arma with a large amount of people. The most people we ever really have when we play Arma is four people on a big night. Maybe we'll have five. But I think we've had six before. But I think we've had six really? like once. But, but most of the time, four four is pretty normal. Yep. You know? so, we can't fill a squad. <laughs> yeah. So we want to play some of the bigger missions because there's a lot of really uh, big stuff for Arma 2 and Operation Arrowhead. And there will be big stuff for Arma 3. Um, but we need more people. So if you own Arma 2 and or Arma 3 and you Arma would be interested... Arma 3 specifically as we move Ar- into release. Arma 3 specifically as we move into it, but until like it officially releases and there's some good missions, 
we have loads of Arma 2 missions we could play, you know, while Arma 3 is getting off the ground. Because if we're playing with people, I don't want to play missions that are going to break constantly, which is a lot yeah. of the Arma 3 stuff we've seen. Uh, but I'm sure within a month or so, we're going to have some really good stuff for it. Or um, the AI can 360 no-scope you from a thousand meters away, <laughs> night vision. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you'd be interested in playing Arma with us... Um, then tweet at us, uh, leave a comment on one of these videos. Let us know. Like, and we're, we're just trying to gauge the amount of interest. And we we'll probably yeah. have to tweet out because this is kind of late in the podcast. A lot of people probably won't have listened this far. <laughs> Everyone just sleep at this point. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll ask people. Um, you know, we're asking you now. Let us know if that's something you'd be interested in doing. And maybe we'll pick out, like, a couple missions and we can have an Arma night where uh, everybody yeah. hops on. Nice. And if you follow, oh, like... Um germ gaming or evil vikings channel you kind of know the style we play and often we will like a lot of those are custom built missions by us yes um, and i think often we'd like to go bigger in scale um but yeah that would mean having people to play with and we'd love to have some of you guys join us if um if we had people out there <laughs> yeah yep speaking of joining us <laughs> hey joel hey joel what's up guys you recording hey guys. did you not see my comments i was I commenting i, I was replied. creeping I Jim, I was like, Joel's in the comments on the video. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. What's he doing out there? <laughs> are you uh, recording, Joel? Yeah, I already am. Okay. All right. Well, you are just in time because we've gone through every single one of our topics. And now it is time for 90 Seconds with Joel, part of the podcast where Joel talks about whatever he wants <laughs> for 90 seconds. Joel, <laughs> spot. do you need any preparation or can I just throw you straight into it? Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice look you're giving me. <laughs> um, once again, ladies and gentlemen, there is no Half-Life 3 announcement. <laughs> <laughs> the fallback. I freaking hate people. Oh my gosh. Um, no, actually, uh, since Dave just beat Last of Us, I'm just like the carrier of goodwill. I, 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 <laughs> Dave gave me the PS3. And then I immediately drove it over to Ben's house, and now he has the game. And I'm forcing him to play through the game because I think all should play Last of Us. <laughs> Chris, Chris is supposed to let me know when he wants me to mail him the PlayStation. <laughs> yep. and, unless you found somebody up there with the PlayStation you can buy. No, no, I still want it. It's just a matter okay. of finding time to play it. It's well worth it. It's well, well, I'm was, sure. Well, Skinner, it, sorry, go ahead. Are you going to get GTA Five on PS3? Because I'm debating between Xbox and PS3 if I want to play with somebody else. Uh, probably gonna get. Uh, well, if I uh, here's the. Are hard. we going to be able to wait for PC? <laughs> exactly. I am. I, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm wait. Gonna I'm gonna both. get it, and then I'll get yeah. it on both. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm right, gonna get it on both because um, my mom is rich. <laughs> <laughs> yes, to Joel. To answer your question. Yeah, I'm gonna get it on PS3. Okay, so I might get it on that then. Um, I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna get it immediately. Um. But oh. it's like be two either. weeks away. I'll probably be. I'll probably get it pretty much as soon as hey, it comes out. Hey, uh, well, you can see it when we are hanging out at the beach. Yeah, because I'll be getting it that week. Um, because that's the number one thing to do on a beach vacation. Not in a creepy way, like me and Skinner are going to the beach, just us alone. Uh, Dave's <laughs> coming to too. GTA Five <laughs> <laughs> together. So, just a little getaway trip to play some Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> maybe, it's a work. Maybe it's a work trip for me. <laughs> I can say with certainty that I will not be buying GTA Five for my PS3. I've already decided right. that won't be happening. All right, all right. I will say now that uh, now that the division is confirmed for the PS4 or for the PC, I don't know if I'm getting a PS4 anytime soon. Oh snap! Because like the big things I was interested in, I mean, the division was certainly one of them, and it's coming to the PC. I probably still will want to get a PS4 at some point, but you I know might Uncharted wait. Four is going to come out. Yeah, it it might Uncharted Four might be what does it, um, but I think I'm gonna I'll wait on a PS4. I mean, I have to wait now. Like they they've sold over <laughs> a million pre-orders already, oh, which man. there's, there's no way awesome. they're gonna be able to fulfill all of those. So I'm betting that the PS4 is gonna be sold out until like March, or it's gonna be very hard to get one till like March. Yeah. Um, I should have pre-ordered one just to sell. I thought about it. And I was like, eh, I don't want to spend the money. You should have when uh, GameStop had that really good trade-in sale. Or they, no, they had, Joel, GameStop yeah, Game... does not have really good trade-in sales. Really they good means did. like, yeah, less than half of what eBay will give you. 
If you want to sell through eBay, yeah, then go ahead. Yeah, I mean, if you want to make money or whatever. I've had nothing good come from eBay, ever. I mean, GameStop had to, like, you know, we'll double it and give you a nickel for your game, but, you know. In case you guys don't realize, Joel is a regular victim of GameStop. <laughs> I know. <it's- laughs> I have not had one problem. For me, I like perusing and looking at my games and on a digital software you can- thing only. Uh, the trailer does way better. I talk with guys. See, I go in there and I talk with the guys. I know the people Why there. They're really do cool. That? <laughs> because I, I've known them for like five years. They they went to a church of mine before, and that's because you're a so sucker, Joel. <laughs> so you can see a sucker from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not elitist like you guys are. Here's that guy bringing in his PS3. We'll give him eleven dollars. Woo! We're doubling to twenty-two <laughs> and a coupon that <laughs> you can only spend here in our store. Hey, well at least you actually can trade back your games, unlike Steam. So you're kind of Steam. Screwed. You get them so cheap that it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, I want to trade my five dollars. Hey, games. you know what? Okay, the whole like, hey, PC is so much cheaper. It's not cheaper. It's only cheaper if you wait a freaking year. Just so, if you, if you if stay you're, just if you're six okay with months, months, but if you just wait stay a year, the curve a little. Stay you behind can wait the curve, like a month but... and get it for thirty bucks. No, not yes. on game thirty bucks. Bioshock no. Infinite was thirty games. bucks. Yeah. Crappy games Bioshock for thirty Infinite bucks. Was sixteen dollars the other day. And, and guess what? Guess what? The same time as thirty dollars, you could get it on console for thirty dollars. So Joel, Joel, what? Bioshock Infinite, one month after release was twenty nine ninety nine on PC. One month. It was the same on, on on console as well. I found mm-hmm. it too. Yeah, I found a deal. It was on Amazon as well. So I don't want to hear it. Was it denial, used? everyone? Behold denial. <laughs> I'm not denying. I'm saying like you can find deals on console stuff too. I For got sure. not Just nearly not as, as good. good of deals. Joel, humble bundle. Well, there. <laughs> I can't drop the mic. The mic is attached okay, to my desk. The PC but... I'm spending is gonna. I'm gonna spend complete fourteen hundred dollars. That's your no, fault. Fourteen hundred plus. Three hundred dollars? No, two hundred dollars more. Fault. For six hundred dollars, you keep saying, Joel, you want to beat my PC. For six hundred dollars, you could build a computer that will keep you for like the next five years with most games. That is complete bullcrap. No, it is not. That is complete bullcrap. Yeah, if you wanted to go for under thirty frames, yeah, Chris. Definitely. When was it? Was two thousand and eleven when you upgraded from an Athlon dual core and an eight thousand eight hundred GT, right? <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Those are 2006 parts, aren't they? I'm just roughing yes, you guys' feathers. I don't really right. even hey, care. Hey, Chris, you could play pretty much everything, couldn't you? I could. Yep. All Actually, right. the, I have th- so much That's kind of terrifying. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Like, if you're willing to run things at mid-spec, which still well. looks better than consoles. And, and my question is, is there any PC person that is willing to do that? <laughs> yes, uh, there are a lot. <laughs> Joe makes a good point. We don't have I'm the willpower the last no, five you years. No, you don't. You don't. We are all now... <laughs> in our yeah, well, 20s with little commitment and have spare income. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're, <laughs> when we're, we were in college, it worked just fine. And I still ran games on mostly high settings until the until later on. <laughs> All right, hold on. I'm bringing up the Steam hardware survey because, Joel, there's actually some interesting stuff in here. Yes, oh, is there? That's, yeah. There is. Um, Say most users are using iPhones now? The most <laughs> most people have a dual core. Uh the average GPU or the most popular single GPU is an Intel HD 3000. Um, but that's all that is. It's integrated into oh. the, Ugh. into Sandy bridge. That's, that's mostly, that's going to be laptops and stuff taken up. But these are people who have steam and use steam and participated in the survey. Um, 1080p is the most common, uh, resolution. Uh, video RAM most common is one gigabyte. So that's like a couple generations of video card old, uh, most common processors, like the most popular, are dual cores. Almost 50% of people using Steam st- still only have a dual core. Uh, most of them only have 250 to 500 gigs of hard drive space. Like, it's... Whoa. Yeah. What's it, that like? Yeah. <laughs> we are the elite and, I mean, the, the arm of yeah, you community. Are. The, I mean, the, the most... PC community is going down, uh, you know. <laughs> it is. Every, every year. No, every mo- no, no, it's, it's not. not. It is. Have you not read the news? I'm not Citations, talking about PC please. gaming. Not PC Citations, gaming. Citations, please. PC oh. gaming is the only reason it computers... PC really sales. Good. All the PC gamers like us build. I know. That's what I'm saying. They're, but same thing, sales. sales it, it's a, it's a made-up... a huge up, deal. It's a made-up no, metric, though. No, because PC gaming continues to grow. It's a made-up metric, though. It'll, because it'll stay in separate say, little cores, oh my boy. friend. They say PCs are declining <laughs> in sales, but Ultrabooks Focus. are going up. Tablets are going up. A tablet is a computer, okay? It's a computer in a uh, different form factor. And okay, com- so my watch is a computer because it has computer parts in it. So, 
Just saying. <laughs> you know what I'm talking. I'm not talking iPads. I'm talking actually desktop computers. Like okay, build, de- I know yes, the most people that build their own. Down, but people, but the most popular graphics card is an integrated graphics chip on dual core processors. That's for the most now. popular thing. I said for that's, now. That's like that's laptop quality yep. stuff. So you're like saying the five years of decline means nothing? You don't think that has anything to do with I maybe I think the market's just iPads? changing. There are more computers than ever before. And the people who sold their computer to buy an iPad weren't doing that much PC gaming anymore. No, they were, I'm saying PC gaming <laughs> is going good. They'll always keep going for a very, very long time. But I'm saying PCs in general, no, they are declining. So the, 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 way, the way we've known them is changing. I don't yeah, think they're declining. Yeah. The, the overall sales decline computers. actually means that, that the percentage of, of PC gamers is actually going up because more and more it's the PC gamers that are continuing but to do PC like the full users builds. in general are going down. PC users in general. Sorry. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah. They're, yeah that's, they're branching out. Instead, like, it's just it's yeah. changing. The market's changing. The definition of what's a computer and what isn't is yeah. very is so more I'm saying, fluid. Desktop now. computers, like like the main things you go and buy at Best Buy that have crappy software on it, that have viruses. Best Buy, that's your That's, what I'm, that's Joel, what I'm saying. you would Best Buy and GameStop. <laughs> I I'm don't, just like, there's, there's a better way to live, Joel. <laughs> yes. PC, saying, desktop I, PC sales. I know how down. to buy a computer. I'm not talking about me. Do I'm talking you? about other people. As far as I yes, know, I you do. just run to your friends and like, here, oh, I just boy. want something better than Dave. <laughs> okay, I could build my own computer if I wanted to. But <laughs> I just I, don't want to. No. I could totally be the NFL if I wanted to. If I no. want, it's like people say, I'm really, really smart. I'm just kind of lazy. Hey, I built every single one of my PCs except for the last one and then this one. I could build it. It's just that I'm not up to speed as much as you guys now. For the okay. last How many have you had? I've, I've built four on my own. Okay. That's my first good. PC from 98. Young. And then a, 2000, a, a Windows 2000 computer, then a 98 you then, built a Windows 2000? I'm oh, sorry, a 98, then a 2000. Sorry, yeah. Oh, I wish and I then, could give uh, you a hug. That's terrible. Then a Windows XP. <laughs> yeah, a Windows XP, and then uh, crappy Vista, and then on. But uh, I haven't just haven't stayed up to – I don't know the like the current – It is a lot to stay up to date with. Yeah, it is. Which, it is you know, Joel, after we, after we build yours, you're going to be right caught up again. Like it's it's going to be it's pretty only got easy. No, I won't because I'm just going to close my ears and close my eyes. You, you got to stay, <laughs> stay awake for the magic to happen. You got to stay awake for the benchmarking and overclocking. Do you guys want to have a party? You can come over to my house. Woo. It's a little bit of a drive. Uh, I'm <laughs> probably going to say You're nerdy, you're nerdy no. enough. Come on. Get a plane ticket, Chris. Just, <laughs> I'm not just saying, airdrop in. I'm not saying I don't yes, want to. build <laughs> Joel's computer and sit there as Jeremiah tries hey, to shove his hands you know, into the case. You know what we should, do? we should do? We should do a uh, Casual Shenanigans podcast live video feed. That's what you do. Of the, of the building of your computer? Yeah. That sounds kind of awesome, actually. <laughs> and then also we release could. it as a podcast. It would be comedy. So just quiet. <laughs> That sounds right. kind of awesome. Before we yeah. before we go today, uh, we have a um, we have a uh, listener question. And then from... I have one final thing too. Okay. All and right. Then I have a Gatorade to drink. Um, I have a tech <laughs> question. I constantly move a lot, and I have two tech questions. What's a good desktop for about twelve hundred dollars, pre made, for Australians? And what's a good gaming laptop for fifteen hundred dollars, also for Australians? All right. So here's the deal. Uh, I don't know anything about PCs for Australians. Um, <laughs> So I'm googling that, but I can I can help you in general. But I, I need to. Um, you're saying fifteen hundred dollars. I'm assuming that's Australian money, which, as I understand, that's more th- worth more than American money. Um, I could be wrong, but any listeners have ideas for this guy? Please help us out. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm just going to give you general uh, general advice on the computer itself. Mm-hmm. So um, let me see. Da, 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 da. In Australia, um, you, you have uh, Puget, which sucks. Uh, Main Gear. Main Gear does ship to uh, Australia. Um, and let me see. They've got some good ones if you go to their website. Um, website. I, I'm looking for the name of the actual desktop. Main Gear in general is good. I think the Main Gear Potenza would probably be your best bet. You just have to get it configured however you want. But uh, Digital Storm also ships to Australia, so Digital Storm would be good. Um, you can get those like 3570Ks, GTX 670s. Um, what about that, that Super Mega 9000 computer we talked about a few weeks ago? <laughs> I don't think CyberPower PC could ship overseas. It would probably die. And you would not want them to. Um, but yeah, I would look at Digital Storm and Main Gear and just buy whatever the best is for your budget. Unfortunately, since I'm in America, I can't access the same prices you can unless I'm Googling other people talking about them. 
Um, as far as laptops, uh, I would start at exoticpc.com, X-O-T-I-C-P-C.com. I don't know if they ship to Australia or not, but you probably, they probably do. Um, but they sell uh, Clevo. Clevo makes uh, gaming laptops and sells them under several different brand names. The most popular brand name is Sager. And uh, if you're thinking Clevo's gaming laptop, great. yeah, if you're thinking, is yours a Clevo? It is. It actually is a Clevo, yeah. Um, if you're thinking about like gaming laptops as like being those really ugly alien wares with the lights and fins and vents all over them, or like the yeah. Asus ROG ones that look like a fighter jet that like, weighs 13 <laughs> pounds, uh, Sega laptops or Clevos are not like that. They are fairly boring looking. I mean, they're, they're pretty standard and kind of boring looking, but they have really good specs. And I'm looking, um, you should be able to get one with a, a GTX like 770M and a nice. i7 and 8 gigs of memory. Um, now 770M is not as good as a regular GTX 770. That, that's unfortunately right, right. right. But um, for mobile, you know, that, that's that's pretty awesome though. In, in your price range, you should be getting at least an i5 3570K or the mobile equivalent, and you should be getting at least a GTX 670. If you can pull that off, um, buy from Main Gear, Digital Storm, or Exotic PC. Those are all good places to start. Um, unfortunately, like I can't give you a lot more information about Australia. Um, just because I can only find out information like by Googling it. I can't actually go look at what people are selling in Australia without doing some browser hack stuff that I don't – not hacks, but modifying the browser to make it think I'm in Australia. Um, so, as far but, as looks go, I would, start I would there. Yeah, do some shopping around because some of the Clevos do look pretty great. The one that I bought in 2006 actually was a very neat like business-looking gaming laptop where the lid – was an actual sheet of, of brushed aluminum that looked really, really professional. I love the look of my laptop. I mean, it looks nice. It's, it's not like they're not flashy. They're, um, Which is actually exactly what I wanted. I was exactly, like, yeah. <laughs> I do not want glowing LEDs and alien heads everywhere. And cheap plastic. Or but, glowing apples. Yeah, I, I'd start there. Um, just start there, see where it gets you. If you have any like questions about specific specs when you're comparison shopping, let us know. We'll, we'll happily help you. Um, yeah. I, I only have one friend who's bought from Exotic PC. But um, they've got a very good reputation, um, and anecdotally, the friend the friend I have who bought from them is very happy with his computer still a year later. Um, but happy together, a married couple from exotic PC. <laughs> that sounds nice. You're tired, aren't you, Joel? You sound tired. No, I am like completely spunky right now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, before we go, uh, I believe Dave has something for us. He yeah, says we he talked does. last week about the destruction coming up in Battlefield 4 and how it's changed from Battlefield 3 and it's kind of going back to that large-scale ridiculousness of Bad Company 2. Uh-huh. I've got a little gif here for you guys. I just want to get some opinions. Uh, all right. Is this real? That's my first question. Okay. Let me, let me describe it for you. Uh, DICE is doing a video series where they have players who have actually played the beta test describe a Battlefield moment. Those are the moments in the series that everyone always talks about, like the water cooler moments where, you know, I was going to knife this guy and then a helicopter fell out of the sky on fire and smashed him into the ground. Right. So I knifed the co-pilot instead, you know, stuff like that. It's just crazy over the top awesomeness. This moment, apparently this guy was going in for a knife kill. He's going to smash the window of this row of shops on the Siege of Shanghai map in Battlefield 4. And I believe it's a friendly tank is like following him, but it, it plows through the end of the row of stores and proceeds to follow him through all the shops. He's going through the doorways. The tank behind him is just smashing through walls and displays. And Dice takes these these Battlefield moment stories and then goes back and recreates them with the spectator mode and records like a cool no UI video to, to help, uh, I guess, illustrate the description of the Battlefield moment. So this is this is a recreation, but it is actually in game, in engine, and it's an actual thing that you're looking at here in the game. So it looks the, really good. Here's the GIF. Uh, what do you guys think of this? I, we, unfortunately, we can't post it. Uh, we maybe post it in the description of the video, but we can't post it uh, in the comment right now. So sorry, yeah, everybody. If you guys go to live. the official DICE Battlefield 4 channel, it's one of the uh, Battlefield Moment videos there. It should be pretty easy to find. I'm watching it. Um, but yeah, it, uh, so this is real then. Because that was my first question was... This is I mean, in-game during an actual multiplayer test with spectator mode. That's really cool. I'm going to say that that's that's really cool. Is this not something you could do in Battlefield 3? Because I thought you could. No, you can't drive like they're driving through multiple buildings with a tank. You can crash into a building with a tank. Yeah, but, most but of the they're... larger buildings in Battlefield 3 do not have any kind of real destructible surface. Maybe like a corner could fall off or something like that. But not like Bad Company 2. 
No, no. Okay, and, and in this case, it. if you look carefully, it is kind of canned. You can tell that there there are walls set up here that are meant to be destroyed, but still, it's all of the walls, like all the way through, are meant to be destroyed. Like it has it's probably that everything but the corner support columns. I'm guessing exactly. And besides the main wall falling out, there's also a lot of like small debris and chunks of concrete flying around that actually have physics, and that's. That's a, an increase from Battlefield 3 as well, but what do you guys think, looking at it? I think it looks really awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. Oh, Chris okay. is being awfully Chris, silent. Chris is in stunned I silence over there. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> I just want to be <laughs> terribly repetitive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so th there, there's the Battlefield 4 destruction that you guys can't see right now, that we're all yeah. enjoying without you. Good radio, good radio. <laughs> uh, that's going to be the podcast for this week. As always, uh, tweet at us at Casual Shenanigan. If you want to be part of the show, write into Casual Shenanigans at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter, Evil Viking, Germ Gaming, Boundless MP, uh, and YouTube. Uh, and join us next week for more arguing about hardware. <laughs> probably. Evil Viking 13 and Germ Gaming and Boundless MP on YouTube. Chris, you need to get something that people can follow you with. Eh, maybe. His or grandmother. He, his he, grandmother has a Twitter. <laughs> and here's Chris's home address, so you can stalk him outside his house. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. If there's anyone I wouldn't stalk, it'd be Chris. <laughs> Follow Chris in real life, but don't. <laughs> um, Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, that was a little scary. <laughs> Tread lightly. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you for watching. Have an awesome week, and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Later, See guys. You guys.